This is Hong Chiu, a Papa Ohio. Can you give us a round of Everybody, hope you have a good lunch. So uh, I know that a lot of people are from Opapa just for the benefit of anybody that doesn't know what Opapa stands for. Here's uh, on the screen, Asian Pacific Islander American Public uh, Affairs Association. So I am representing Opapa, Ohio. We have uh, operations at uh, Columbus, Cincinnati, and uh, Cleveland. And this is our second year doing the internship program. So just really quickly, the mission and vision of uh, PAPA to inspire, engage, and empower API Americans. And our goal is to, uh, you know, to create a pipeline for the future API leaders. And our uh, youth program has uh, three pillars. One is the internship program, and then we also have a youth chapter as well as the uh, general youth development. This is a picture from this year of uh, Columbus, and this is uh, Cleveland, and this is our uh, Cincinnati program. So before I start, I, I want to let you know that uh, the reason why I can be here to share with you is not because I have anything that's earth shattering, it's because of, uh, you know, we have been doing this for two years and uh, with help from a papa and from everybody around here that give us good advice and that's why we are able to be here. Of course, we saw the funding from CRUSA, that would not even be possible. One special really uh, uh, thing I want to give is to, uh, to the Austin chapter, to uh, the fantastic uh, Alice Yi. She has been super service, and she has been really helping us to get started. So uh, I want people from Austin to bring that thank back to her and let her know that how much we appreciate her help. So to me, uh, from these two years, we keep on uh, learning and then we have a lot of lessons learned. As we are doing our 2019 program, we have been writing down you know, things that we are going to be uh, changing for next year. But then the most essential, I feel, that would be planning. So what do we plan? You know, Michael also talked about what the deliverables. Some of those are deliverables. The goal, the timeline, you know, the training, and for internships. So we have a start date, and then we have the midterm check-in, and then we have the end of uh, the program gala. And of course, uh, we saw the leadership of the youth program. None of this would be possible. So you know, when you design your goal, you want to have a reasonable goal. And this is uh, our timeline from 2018. It's very long, it's two pages long. But then by 2019, we kind of uh, try to condense it into one year to cover all the major timelines and the milestones that we need to accomplish. Um, and you know, throughout the year, we also have a special events. Those are the events that we have so far for the first half of uh, the year. Uh, as you can see, uh, you know, we try to not only keep the youth to be engaged, and we also try to engage the community. So training. Um, this is our training agenda for April 6th, our first training, and then our second training. And then uh, our 20s, May 20s is a CRF um, event. Um, very important, as Michael also mentioned earlier, you know, have very clear expectation for the interns. So our minimum requirement for them is that, that they need to complete their intern, which is a minimum of 120 hours. And then we ask them to complete uh, 20 hours uh, with the APAPA within a year. So that's just um, ADN. I want to you know say that uh, we saw the APAPA use leadership, none of this would be possible. We have the wonderful Ms. Yenning here, also from Ohio, and then we have other people from Cleveland, Cincinnati, who all contribute to the success of uh, this program. So we have been having a lot of, uh, you know, very uh, um, wonderful discussions with leaders from all around the country, and uh, I hope that, that, you know, if you have anything, just approach us and, uh, you know, we can uh, hopefully through our discussion we can find better solutions to all the questions that, uh, that bug us to allow us to offer an even better program for the next year. So, I hope I have stayed in within my five minute uh, boundary yeah, <laughs> and no, you're shaking start, your head. You only talk like two, three minutes. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'm good. So, okay, if any of you have questions? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let them go through, then we'll open up yeah. for dialogue. Okay? Thank you for yeah. getting us started. Thank you. Yeah. Next up is uh, Carolyn Lim.
Villarreal. 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 <laughs> Hi, I'm from the uh, Papa Solano uh, County chapter. Uh, we are in our fourth year of our internship. First year we started with just two interns and have grown this year to 10 interns and five junior interns. Um, we started last year with some junior interns and those are mostly siblings of interns so they could see the excitement from their siblings so they wanted to join and participate in the event. Um, as the prior panel mentioned, a lot of it is just getting um, information with your centers of influence uh, or community civic leaders to build that relationship so that we can have the internships. Um, we have a variety of internships, not only with the mayor, city council. Um, I have one intern who is a biology major who's working with the water resource group. So that's something new for us as well. Um, we have a calendar of events that we've scheduled for our 10-week internship starting with we have our kids participate in our what we call our Fiesta Day parades in around Memorial Day. They also participate in the 4th of July parade. We have a dragon uh, that we uh, co uh, with the Cal with the Chinese American Association of Solano County so the kids get to walk on the parade with the dragon. And actually um, we have uh, an internship orientation last week. We gave them information about uh, working with government officials, how to do elevator speech. Uh, we have additional training, how to do voter registration. We have this requirement for 100 hours um, during the 10 week period. They have to register 10 voters. Uh, we have a API Leg legislative caucus intern day along with uh, Jackie of the uh, Sacramento chapter, so we will be going to the state capitol, hopefully meeting our uh, senators and assembly members, and then also do an, uh, a Papa HQ visit as well. And let's see, resume planning, um, meeting with the Sikh community, community engagement, national night out. I don't know if any of you have heard what that is. It's always the first Tuesday of the month. Um, there's usually block parties going out in the neighborhoods, what we like to do is get out in the community, and most of our kids get their voter registrations on those nights. Um, and then we have our gala scheduled for August 10th, so we have our flyer sent out and we're looking for sponsors to attend that as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, next but not least is Anna Chen of Papa, New York. Such as uh, what to do and not to do in 
different how to be successful in your first day, super important, and your last day is also super important. Uh, stuff like that. So uh, it seems to be, uh, well, we, we are still doing our midterm check-in. That is a process that we do, you know, after they have gone through internship for two or three weeks, we talk to them, have a, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, and then say, hey, you know, how are you doing? How's the, what do you think about the best part, the worst part, the training, et cetera, et cetera. So it seems like our training has been right on target this time. So I'm pretty good to you uh, um, with that. If you want to get a topic, I can show you uh, exactly what we did. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much for that. So Anna, please go ahead. Um, I want to start with the first slide. Um, it starts with the candidates. And um, we want candidates that are well-rounded as well. Um, they could be of any major. We want diversity, of course. Um, we want enthusiasm and demonstrate leadership. Um, most like, likely they've um, done community service in the community um, and passionate about civic affairs. Um, and a good standing GPA um, doesn't mean that they have to have a 4.0 or anything. As long as they're in good standing in their school and they know that they're a good student. Um, we also want to provide internship training. Um, we want to prepare the students for the um, separate interviews that the elected officials offices will be doing themselves. So we uh, answer any questions or concerns that they have, or we hold mock interviews so that they're ready for it um, in case there are any questions that they might encounter. We also hold weekly workshops. Um, ours is on Fridays. Um, and it helps strengthen their leadership and public speaking skills. skills. Um, we also invite certain guests from the community to these workshops, like district leaders, um, the community members of the community outreach team from the elected officials' offices to give their own experiences. Um, and the purpose of the workshop is to give interns the experiences at different levels, because um, it could be a person who's, um, who works well with businesses and an intern might like to have their own business. Um, or they, and they can learn directly from the guests who maybe they want to meet the district leader. This is a chance for them to directly introduce themselves to a district leader. Um, and also assist in public speaking skills because we also require that um, the interns ha ask at least one question for the guests so that um, they can produce good questions maybe later on in their life. Um, it's also important, like everyone said before, to build a relationship with elected officials. Um, there's also limited spaces, as was mentioned before, um, depending on how many um, interns you have. And when you um, build a relationship, you want to state your name, the organization you're from, and the mission, and the programs, and the purpose of your organization. Um, it's also important to continue to keep in contact with elected officials and as mentioned before, especially with the staff, with the elected officials and not just the elected officials themselves. And also um, everyone in the community as well. And the goal is to obviously grow with the organization. Um, it may start out small at first, but with time it'll get better. Um, Papa from New York City started out with only 20, um, three placements in the first year in 2013, and now in a few years we have 10 to 15 interns placed in different levels. Um, we have the New York State Governor, New York City Public Advocate, New York City Controller, um, New York State Senators, New York State Assembly Members, and New York City Council Members. And the purpose of the internship is basically to prepare and help students become great future leaders. Um, it allows the students to gain experience with civic leadership, and um, so they become more involved with their community. Um, their networking skills become better, especially by um, working with, uh, in the elected officials' offices, or um, by just going out to the community and reaching out to community members in general. Um, and they get to learn more about public policy, and with that, they create their own connections and they get to go out by themselves. And it's also important that as the leader of the organization, um, you, you're you also representing yourself as a leader and you're also enthusiastic with the um, intern and you're helping them and you let them know that you're there. And I want to thank Michelle for being such a great um, president of the organization. I was actually a 2015 intern and I came back and she's been helping me every year.
All right. Um, okay. Uh, I'm actually part of the panel too, and I want to share something with you, a different take. Um, so let's have a panel here at the round. So I um, uh, actually uh, made a handout for you. Uh, what I want to share with you is what a party that CLUSA used for uh, online platforms. Uh, so I think that we use a lot of online things, right, in our work, right? And it turns out that when we found out that we could do most of our organizing online, uh, we switched to that. So, uh, I, I don't know. Um, can you hear me, people in the back? Yes. You can hear me, right? Okay. Um, so, um, I just want to share with you, and some of these you've already used. Uh, I put down some of these platforms as potential for uh, your organizations. These are examples. Uh, I, I don't get paid, you know, uh, for promoting these platforms. So these are examples. There are other platforms. And you might share if this as good or what. Uh, most of these are actually free, right? Or well, at least they have free levels. And if you feel you need to, you can decide exactly where we want to invest some money. So the first one is just job form. Right? Uh, does anybody use uh, online applications for your interns? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. So, so you also have your platforms, right? Uh, when you applied to the CLUSA grant, right, it was an online platform, right? You were using job, right? So you're already familiar with it, right? So it turns out that it's very easy. I mean, these days, if you send me a, a written form, it's hard to share with people. It's, Hard to use, hard to watch, hard to keep, hard to everything. Online forms are great, right? So um, we use job form. There are other platforms. Um, you can set up uh, just as we do the application. You, you can do whole grant application on job form. So I'm sure you can do an internship application, right? And have these people send it out, and you know maybe with an online announcement, a link, and they could go there. You know, fill it in, very easy. If you've not thought about it, most of these platforms are self-taught. It's so easy. You just spend some time, you know, fooling around with it. And, 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 and stuff. Yeah. So on the job form, the application, after we submit it, uh, we never receive an a email back like with a copy of the application. Yeah, well, let's talk about some of that uh, down okay. Yeah, but this, when you submit it, they should send you uh, thing to confirm that you submitted, right? When, when's the expert here? So he's the CLUSA uh, tech expert, right? Can you speak to that? Well, I'll let you speak. Uh, what's your question? What, yeah, what's so after we submit? Yeah. Oh, there's a competition that is submitted, but we don't have a way to copy it, like a download the form that we well, submitted. The, and what you are submitted will be attached uh, in the time email. So you should receive an attachment with all the information you submitted. I think yeah. it is there. I do remember. It, it is there. You yeah. have to search a little bit. It's not yeah. always yeah. obvious. It's the confirmation yeah. email. Yeah. Once you submit it, you will receive a confirmation email. Well, with the information. You travel it. So let's save some of those questions. I know these are important because, right? But, uh, but just like any technology, it's, it's kind of learning. It's kind of getting everyone on board. It's not perfect, frankly. Some features it may not have, and so on. And so it's a matter of all of us learning. OK, I'll go through these very quickly. I don't need to spend a lot of time. Google Forms uh, is really good for surveys and evaluations. So tomorrow, we'll be doing some online evaluations. You get your chance to say, yeah. You know, lousy speak, lousy 
lousy uh, MC or whatever, you know. So, so, so you can use uh, Google Form, right, for that, very easy. And it's great to always have feedback, right? Get your interns when they finish, mid-time. So easy to set up. Just ask a few questions. Could be a few questions, could be more questions. Very, very easy. Something to consider. That's not free, all right? Uh, Google Drive, uh, that's where we keep our stuff on the cloud. Uh, it's like a filing disk system. A lot of people use things like that, right? You can do folders, you could do uh, documents, Word documents, spreadsheets, PowerPoints, a lot of stuff. So that's, that's how we do it. Uh, Zoom, some of you, how many people have been on Zoom? Uh, really, mm -hmm. all right, great, okay. I don't know if I introduced it to you, maybe use it other platforms, video call. I love it. When it was introduced to me by another person, I go, I love this. So now all my staff, I don't want to see them. I see them on Zoom, right? <laughs> and a good thing to be on Zoom is that you're face to face to each other. And then you can look at the same document and we can work on the same document right there together, right? So just like everything else, everything else has a place. Right? And that I find very good, especially with so many of us. You have day jobs, you do stuff at night, and then it's hard to just drive 15, 20, 30 minutes just to see somebody get together, coordinate, half the struggle just getting together, right? This is called, hey, why, why don't we Zoom for 30 minutes tonight? Okay, let everybody get on, right? right? And, and that's what we do a lot, okay? Yeah. So I know that our session always ends after 45 minutes. Is there a way that you can make it longer? Of course I can. Oh, I see. Okay, I get it. If it's free, it should be. Uh, that's a question. So, uh, do you know? Yeah. Anthony is my pet. Yeah. yeah. So the free version only allows you forty minutes session. Oh, but right. you can always uh, restart a new session after yeah. that. And if you pay, it, then it's something yeah. Yeah. You get what you pay for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you can also use that to your advantage, right? If you can't finish the meeting in 40 minutes, yeah. right? That gives you that discipline. Let's get right to it, right? Let's finish it. If you really can, just start another session and keep it free. But with us, we pay so that we can, you know, spend lots and lots of time. So it's up to you, right? Uh, Asana, I don't always use it, but my deputy director, he loves Asana. It's a kind of work management, project management. He keeps himself, he assigns tasks to different people when it's done, it's checked off. Right. I, use, I do it the old-fashioned way, but something for you to think about. Team management, project management, very good. Another thing, price is right, free, all right? Okay, uh, Weebly, uh, you know, we used to host our website on Weebly, and so if you want to see the Apati website, go to apati.org, and you can see the existing website. But we're going to put online a new website next week or maybe two weeks from now. Then you can also see the new website. New website is a lot more fancy and all that. But Weebly is totally, totally adequate. And we use it for our main website. And then actually, when we run a class, we sometimes use a website there too. So for instance, you have your big program, then you have your internship program. The internship program kind of can have its own website so that people looking for it, they can go there and they can find out more information. You can have different levels of depth there for people who want to. So something to think about. And again, the price is right. It's great. All right? OK. Uh, constant contact is what we use to create brochure flyers. Right? The good thing with constant contact, you can create a flyer. You can put a live link into it. And you can put an apply button. It's good for you know, different things. And then Canva is something like that. And the nonprofit, well, profit.com is a online printing, right? You just come. So I'm sure other people have other things that you use. So when we go to the next section, you can also share with them. It's the things that work. OK, so at this point, we're going to just open up uh, for other people to share your experience. And for this one, uh, specifically, is how do you get organized, right? What, what works for you? I, I know a lot of us have similar experience, like, we all work in the daytime, so we have to meet at night, or we have to do this. We have to, right? How do you get things done? How do you push things forward? How do you make decisions? How do you, you know, sort of that organizing side of it? If you have any insight or any tips for other people, uh, this is a great time to share. Yes, please. Um, I have a question. Uh, I'm a 
So I would just echo what the Coleman said. For Papa Ohio, we have group leaders. Uh, so what we do, we are very disciplined for a weekly meeting. That's why when we're talking about Zoom, it will just pick us up after 40 minutes. Uh, but we take action items after each meeting, and we go back the next week and look at the action item, where we are, what we have achieved, and put on more action items. So if you do that routinely, it doesn't seem like you're working so hard because you have a strategy. That's what I want to share. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing. Other people or panelists can come jump back in too. Yes, please. Are any of these that you've listed for free um, do um, newsletters to an email distribution list like yeah. um, MailChimp? MailChimp is great. Yeah, but it costs. Yeah. So is anything here that you mentioned for free does the equivalent of MailChimp where you have an email distribution list? I think constant contact, yeah. you have to pay for it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Some of these have a free version, right? But uh, does anybody know, can answer that question? We use constant contact, but I think we pay for it. Uh, it's, it's affordable. The lowest level is I can't remember. It's been maybe $5, $10 a month, that kind of level might be worth your while. Honestly, in constant contact, uh, for a variety of reasons, we don't really use it to email out. Right? I use it and I send a draft to myself. And I take out the bottom that says, this is just a draft. I just take that out. And then I, I use it and I forward it to my lists. But, 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 but that's just a quirk. But um, so um, other people know of free ones? Sometimes you could just Google it, <laughs> right? Where was a free what, right, email, right, program or whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Michael, I yeah. yeah. So, uh, what I want to share is about this uh, Google Drive. We actually use it extensively. For each year, we start our, such as a 2018 internship. And then under there, we have different folders. And then we have 2019 in the different folders. So each use leader, we have access to the folder. Then such as uh, when we are doing the gala, you go to the gala folder. Or when we are doing the interview, you go to all the candidates folder. There it has their application, their bio, their picture, and everything will be there. So all the documents are organized, and then everybody will have access. So that make it a lot easier after the program. You know, when you want to look for something, you know where to go to look for it. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, just one, 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 one suggestion. If you're thinking about doing that, and because you're multiple people using it, one thing we've learned is that you've got to kind of think a little bit about what's the strategy, right? What's your strategy? It's like a filing system, right? If it's your own filing system, it can be as weird as you like, right? But if you're sharing with other people, it's going to make sense to everybody. And then what's the document name, right? So, so what, for instance, a poly, we have five programs, right? So we have names for them. So Youth Leadership Academy is YLA, and just like what she said, so YLA 2019, YLA 2018, and documents usually start with YLA 2019, and da da da, you know. So, so, so people can easily access, right? And then as you go down, well, most documents doesn't matter to share, but if it's, <laughs> there are some documents that are sensitive, then you kind of have to have a way to deal with that, right? Sometimes we uh, allow our interns uh, access to <coughs> some documents, but not others, some folders into not folders. So just look, be still, you will, you will learn as you move along. Yeah. I, I think that's a really good point about you know, the sensitivity of different documents, such as uh, for our intern, you know, when they apply, they provide their birthday, their, you know, uh, maybe some other sensitive information. So we. Everybody on our team we knows that you have to be very careful with the right. personal information. Right. You know, make sure you don't really share it with anybody. <coughs> Only use it as needed. Right. So I think that's. And then maybe thing. after the year you can consider taking it down, putting it just on somebody's hard drive somewhere. Right? Uh, it's kind of not not that useful anymore after they finish their internship. You know, you don't really you don't want some of those you know information. Yeah, it's, 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 right. So anyway, uh, other people, what do you do to keep organized? That's helpful that you want to tell us. We use Dropbox. 
Dropbox. Okay, say a, say a sentence or two about Dropbox. Java is, is free for the basic. Okay. So if, if everyone you're in your community can have a job box, and yeah. then you can share. You can right. share some to some people and some or not. Right. Good. Yeah. Good. Capacity also matters, right? Some uh, have lots of capacity. Uh, some have really big free capacity, right? So these days, depending once you start doing videos and stuff like that, that can pick up a lot of data. Yeah, they have Dropbox business as well, exactly. in case you are interested. Exactly. Very good. Thank you for that. Yes, please. I know you like Zoom. Has anybody tried Google Hangout? The students really like Google. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can do everything. Yeah. At least the conference. Yeah, the, 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 the Google Hangout, I don't think they have the ability to look at documents at the same time. You can share your screen. Share your screen. Can you share the desktop? Uh, well, screen, screen is desktop, right? Can they let other people work on the same document? So with Zoom, mm -hmm. not only can I open the document, you can see my document on the desktop. I can give you control. <laughs> you can type on that document all at the same time. <laughs> it's great for color. So each will have its points, right? So try that too. Google Hangout, we use that too, but young people like it. Yeah. I have a question too, okay. um, You mentioned about you have a weekly workshop for the intern. How long does that program last? So how is the system systems ability? I can't say that word. Because it's a lot of work for a weekly workshop. Yeah. It's, um, we have it every <coughs> Friday. So before that, they work for the intern at the Lesson Officials Office, and then every Friday, um, it each topic is different. Sometimes we use like the district leader. Sometimes we just let them um, collaborate on uh, on their reflection of their uh, position in the elected officials' office, so that they can each give advice to each other and learn from each other. And then um, during my year, I know that uh, they we um, worked on a community project together as well. So it was every Friday. Every Friday throughout the year? Yeah, throughout the year. Wow. It, wasn't, um, it wasn't a super long uh, workshop. And also, the interns do not complain. It's too much work for them. <laughs> <laughs> As a past intern, I actually appreciated the workshop because it brought us back together to um, reflect on everything. So, thank you. So, so hold those thoughts because no, the next panel the is going to be on intern training. So do we could go into that some more. I know that's on everybody's mind. That's a very important thing. That's good. Um, other, other comments? What do you do in particular to organize yourself, organize your group? Uh, and what, 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 what has worked? Yeah. It's slightly sidetracking, side but I know yeah. that she's a former intern. And so what we try to do in Austin is we try to make sure that there's an alumni network let the interns know that it's not just a internship and they're done. Right. They kind of stay involved. Right. So we reach out to our former interns and we have them actually come back to our training sessions. And they're kind of a reference point for a lot of the current interns when they have questions about an office and they're not sure of. Instead of asking an adult, which they might be nervous about, they actually reach out to the former interns or the former alumni and they're the ones that actually do direct feedback for them. Very good. So the, that, that yeah. network, that community building aspect is so important. It's so important. You want to get people that will send you all the good things. Good interns, recommend people, they're your best assets. And then when they come back to train other people, they would listen to them in a different way. They have a lot of credibility. When she's like that, they say, hey, I'm a former intern. Look at me, I'm involved. You know? mm -hmm. that, that speaks louder. Yeah. So those, those are great things. So uh, just, just to follow up on that a little bit, what kind of platform do interns like to use to stay in touch? Um, they use a lot of Facebook Messenger. It's one of their most common ones. They create their own groups and they message each other in that. Um, I've seen them do Google Hangouts too. And then we just have a lot of like email chains are also like a common thing. Okay, good. So uh, you can consider uh, what we do is we kind of have our official, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, you can think about how to do it. You can get uh, former people to do it. Sometimes it's more official side. Sometimes it's very, very, um, uh, very.
very uh, organic. People just start their own little groups. So you want to think a little bit about that. But uh, how do you engage people uh, online? Right? At times, you want to put in their uh, stuff like that, at least to offer them to stay in that A lot of people are going to get busy with other things, and that's completely OK. But you know, our job is to offer them to stay, give them a platform to stay in the so I have a comment on the, yeah, we have a similar comments about the interns. You know, we always ask the past interns to come back the second year when we have the new group of interns to share their experience. And also, uh, so another project that we haven't really started, but it's uh, in preparation is that uh, we want to set up a database to track the, you know, career or their life progression of the interns that have gone through our program. You know, to see, to understand the impact of uh, the internship right. on their lives. That's so right. I think we should do it nationwide right. to collect all the data that you can see That's how right. to be more effective. Right. And then we also have um, the interns do an electronic journal of, to keep tra not only track of their hours, what they've done, what they've learned, and at the end of their internship feedback, uh, what they felt they learned or if they want somewhere like midterm to learn something else, or maybe it wasn't the right fit, uh, so that we can uh, tweak the program later on for information, and then we give them a packet when they start that gives them information about uh, the political, you know, what's federal level, what's state level, down to the local level, along with if it's a certain county, who the leaders are in that county, so that they know what the contacts are. That note, uh, anybody, last comment, please? Um, yeah. I just want to add a whole comment. Uh, I think it's very important to encourage the previous teams uh, to get involved. And uh, we start our internship in I mean, the team, this in March uh, 17, and uh, what the uh, 2015 and uh, so now, and uh, now what the 2017. Now they are the both other. Workshop, you know, fun to everyone. So we all, we, each year, we have a future, like a bit of court, you know, the civil court, um, criminal court. Mm. And as a matter of fact, one of my intern, uh, Sherry, I was really uh, Sherry, 2015, she worked for the Manhattan the District of the office. So it's very important to you know, uh, explore your intern, not only. Uh, in a work, not only the workshop inside, mm -hmm. indoor, in the office, like, uh, you know, take some out, the visit the court, the visit to the city court, the visit to the uh, chamber, you know, I think it's very Get them to visit yeah. the jail. They'll learn <laughs> so much. <laughs> <laughs> Did you limit it that you only in terms or open to public you? Um, the intern, I have like two groups. One is the intern who I send out to different level of elected official office. And I also have a group of the volunteers, uh, which are high school students and uh, rising freshmen, not in college. Okay, thank you so much. Can we give them a round of applause?